Welcome to the Human Design System. It's called the Science of Differentiation because it helps you understand how you're here to be different. You're not the same as everybody else, and particularly those of us projectors, we call them advisors in the career and business application of the Human Design System. We're not here to do all the doing and to manifest everything. We need to work in partnership, ideally in teams of one-on-one, -on -one, so a partnership, or some of us have an ability to hold space for a group of individuals. We can lead individuals in small groups or large groups, depending on our design. So I'll show you some of the applications of that. In this program, which this is the live open house for, I like to take you through an awakening success secret experience. So it's not just about living your design. This is specifically for projectors. So it's about living your projector design so that I can help impart to you all of the secrets. And interestingly enough, the sun is in uh, gate 13, which is about listening to the secrets of others. I've heard a lot of secrets in my life. I have the other side of the channel and I'm here to share with you what I remember. In sharing with you what I remember from the actual experiential road of having been in human design for eight years now, not only that, but since 2014, specializing in awakening projectors, I have a lot of experience that I can share with you in learning the practical application of how to use this system in your life. You probably, if you're learning this, want to know how does it work, why does it work, how can it help me be more successful. So I have a lot of experience on my plate with actually using the system with individuals as clients, as students, and also with businesses and corporations and teams. So if you're an entrepreneur, you're in the right place, especially if you're a projector attempting to be an entrepreneur. It really helps to know your stuff in human design so that you know how to treat other people on your team or in your employ. Now, in this program, my primary operative is to invite you into the experiment of human design, of living your human design. And that requires that you learn how to use your strategy, your projector strategy, use your authority to make decisions, your own personal decision-making strategy for your decision-making process, and actually guide you through the experience. So it usually takes projectors much longer to get to a place of empowerment. Why? Because our strategy is not for the little things. It's for the big things in life. And those big things in life, what to do for work, where to go to live, who to love, who to bond with, does not come along every day. So you need some coaching or guidance as you go through this process as a projector. Six months is usually about the time frame where you start to really see how it works in your life. So if you're brand new to human design, give it some time. It does take some time to get to that place of empowerment, particularly if you're very open in your design and you're very bitter in your life experience. If you're bitter right now, don't worry, there's hope. Hope is on the way. Help is on the way because you can change your fate. Hi. I have changed my fate with this experience of living my design because of before human design, it was in a very, very different place. Suicidal ideation, having all kinds of work and relationship issues. And now I couldn't be happier with who I am and the love of myself. That's the biggest key for human design. What it can do for you is help you love who you are, who you are for others in the projector context so that you can have the success that you so richly deserve. It is about success. When you are living in alignment, you have, you exude this aura of success. And for me, it's a contagion. It affects everybody that's around me. That's what I'm here for. That's my life's work. It's about changing your fate. So when we're going through our process, of recognizing how are you gonna change your fate? The one most important thing I want you to remember is your decision-making strategy. So we're gonna talk about the um, strategy, how you make decisions today. And as far as your individual authority, that's gonna take some time. And there's a lot of different authorities that we have as projectors, as you can see here, the solar plexus, your emotional intelligence, the splenic center, which is your survival instincts, the ego or heart, which is your willpower function, the identity and direction, we call that the G center in human design, or your conceptualization process in context with hearing yourself sounding board that 
um, conceptualization process out with multiple others in your life. So these different kinds of projectors have different ways of sourcing into their body for their authority. And that is what is going to help you change your fate. So that's a big part of this program to make sure that you are very clear on what your authority is like, how it shows up for you, how it's designed to have its influence or guidance in the world, how it shows up for you. Okay, so welcome to all projectors. If you're a projector, you're in the right place. This is specifically for projectors. If you're not a projector, maybe you have a projector romance, you know, romantic partner or a work partner or you have children or you have parents, this particular presentation is also going to help you understand them. Okay, so for the beginning piece, puzzle piece, we're going to start with what we are as beings. So the kind of energy frequency that creates the kind of human that is projected or projector is an aura or an energy that focuses and penetrates and is absorbing of the other person, one person at a time. That is one of the biggest success secrets is that your aura, your energy works best one person at a time. Now, the existential question or the way that I can get you to wake up to who you are is to focus yourself outward, your attention outward. So the primary operative of a projector is about knowing the other. So your question is, who are you, this person that's right in front of me? Okay, who are you? What do you want from me? How can I guide you? How can I serve? How can I support? And the biggest problem that happens with us projectors is that we tend to initiate interactions with others. And that is not our trip. We are not about the manifestation of our relationships. We need, in order for our energy to be used correctly, to be used by life correctly, and to be successful in this life, other people need to approach us first for guidance. So I'm going to share with you a really silly example that will hopefully help you remember this. Imagine Lavina out on the street corner with a big old sign saying, I can guide you. I'm a projector. I'm an advisor. I can help you find success. Let me give you all of my advice doesn't work, hey? All of those people will be driving by and go, who the hell is this crazy lady with her sign? I can help you, please. You know, let me help you. No, please take yourself out of that position. Now, for those of you who are like this person on the slide, you have an undefined throat center. This is our communication and action function. If you are initiating conversations, stop. That doesn't work. If you are offering your services without a recognition and invitation, and we'll talk more about what that is later, then you most likely will not have the kind of advice and success that you're really desiring or want in your life. It's not necessarily what the other person needs. All projectors are here to see. We're here to see things from a higher level perspective. We can see a lot because our minds are not in our own trip if we're aligned. But if you're misaligned, you're always trying to figure out who the hell am I? Who the hell am I? Who the hell am I? What am I here for? Why am I here? All of that stuff that's going inward, focusing inward, is not your trip. That's you amplifying the world of the generator, those defined sacral center beings, those people who have consistent energy resource and a response to life. You're here to guide them, not be them. So one of the things I'd like to invite you to contemplate in this presentation is I'm going to teach you how to work best with those other uh, generators, the types of humans that we are not, 67%, approximately 66, are generator. We're about 20% of the population. We're very, very different. It is not our trip this life. It is about who are you. You help enough other people to their success, you get your success in return. Okay? So that's one of the primary operatives. Wait for the invitation. Now, that's a two-part strategy. You see this on the top? It says strategy. Wait for recognition of your gifts and your talents, wait for you to light up inside, and then you need a formal invitation. Now, ideally, this is down on bended knee when you're getting married. This is really the kind of formal invitation that you don't try to sneak an invitation 
you know, elicit an invitation from this other person, you know, if we get married, then maybe together you and I, and you go off into this daydream fantasy land. Do not initiate with others unless it's another projector or a reflector. Manifestors and generators are off limits. Do your best to leave them be and let them come to you. Now, what happens when you do that? Here's another example. Do you remember back in the day in Kings and Queens when we needed to have audiences to talk to the royalty? So we had to go, and we had to petition, and we had to wait. Okay, imagine yourself like that. I'm not saying that we're all kings and queens and telling other people what to do. I'm saying that other people need to approach you first. If you try to interject yourself into a conversation or a situation where you have not been invited, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And if you're a projector experimenting with human design for a while, you know this. You need to have an opening, an energetic opening in the conversation. They need to be available to your penetration. If you try to penetrate other people, and that's just what our energy do does, <laughs> it just gets there in or contact with that other person, and it gets right into the core of who that person is, it absorbs who that person is. So if you're penetrating without an invitation, the not self theme or the signpost on the side of the road that tells you, hey, you're off track is a deep feeling of bitterness, a sourness down to the point of resentment. So if you're in a relationship right now where you don't feel seen, you don't feel valued, you don't feel appreciated and you're bitter to the point where you're resentful, guess what? Signpost, off track, off track, off track. You need to get to this place where everything in your life is feeling sweet and you feel seen and you feel successful. And that only comes if you're in operation with the right other. Your whole trip is about discernment of the right other. And that's where the strategy and authority kicks in. So your decision-making strategy, if you wait for recognition and invitation, this is what is going to give you the signpost of green light. Let's go. And then you use your authority to discern who is this other person and are they right for me? That's your job once you've been recognized. Again, asked or invited. Invited into that relationship, into that job, into that opportunity, into that um, marriage, whatever it happens to be. So the mechanics of a projector, if you're new to this and you want to learn how to begin to learn to read charts, how you can discover whether or not somebody is a projector is you look at their design and you immediately see that there is no sacral center defined. That's that red square now down towards the bottom. That's the energy resource. So all projectors do not have access to generation of energy. That's the world of the generator. That's the world of our builders of our world. We're not that. We're here to guide that. Now, the other thing that you're going to notice in a projector is that they never have energy consistently connected to the throat. We are primarily about communication. We are never about action. We are not about initiating action. That's the job of our manifestors. There's only particular people who are here to in initiate and innovate and inform in order to impact. That's the manifestor. And these are the quickest way we get energy up to the throat. Okay, so you're not going to see these channels ever in a, in a projector, and you're never going to see a, a projector with the generator channels. That means that we have no consistent access to manifestation and no consistent access to generation of energy. If you've ever studied the body, the biological system, you know how red blood cells they're all over your body. They go everywhere. They're the workers. They carry all of this, you know, um, information, you know, they, they carry the oxygen, they oxygenate, they're everywhere, everywhere, just like our generators. Yeah, that red sacral center. Now, us as projectors, as advisors, some of us have this ability to get called where we're needed to go, or recognized, or seen, or valued, and appreciated for how we get this, we see the big picture view, and how we can advise based on our knowing of the other based on our awareness of who the other is for themselves or what their impact is. 
So this is the primary operative. You are not here to super slave away and do everything and initiate everything. But this is the biggest influence that has, has conditioned you in your life. Your parents made you believe that you had to work hard and your parents made you to believe that you had to go out and make it happen, potentially. Did anybody do that? Is that true for you? My, my dad told me when I was younger, work hard, study hard. Like that was the biggest thing that he imparted to me. And yet for a projector, we don't have the consistent generative source of energy that allows us to consistently produce or be productive. That's not our trip. Same thing too. If we try to manifest too hard, we end up with thyroid issues. Anybody have hypo or hyperthyroid issues? Okay, so watch out for that. These are signposts, your body talking to you. The signature and goal of our life is about the success of others. Others is the key operative word here. It's not about your success. Your success comes through the other person. Okay, it comes through the other person, knowing who that other is. So we are excellent at guiding and advising others. We're that link in the chain, that circle in the middle, that's holding everything together because we can see where things belong or where things go. So you could be a team lead, you could be um, at the top of the hierarchy of a chain of command, and that is the best way for a projector to lead. You could be a systems consultant, so maybe you don't like people, but you really like systems, and you know, without a shadow of a doubt, how that system works. You've mastered it. Some of us have the ability to be really good networkers, connecting people, knowing where things, oh, those two should really get to know each other, yeah? Where you can see the big picture and how to connect people when invited. Remember, again, this is always about first, recognition of your strengths, talents, and gifts, and second, invitation, and then always, what is your decision-making process telling you, your authority, which is a, a an energy that can be felt in your body lighting up. It's an energy that can be felt. It is not this desperation. It is not this uh, neediness or graspiness. It's something that lights you up from within in recognition of the other person's recognition of you. Now, you can also be, some of us are really great at being mediators, you know, to um, seeing two perspectives or maybe even three perspectives and being able to synthesize and see, perceive the needs and to mediate those two or maybe more parties. The teacher, because projectors are here to master systems, they are great at teaching. Okay, teaching is another one of, there's all the, a lot of other places in the body graph where we can see teachers, but because they're here to master systems, once they, get, once they get to that systems mastery, they can teach. Or they can be a coach, life coaches, therapists, all kinds of service providers that work with people. And again, if you don't like people, you're going to master a system because you like figuring out how things work. A lot of times, just understanding how, what is the big picture view and then how does it all fit together, like that puzzle piece that I have at the beginning of the slide presentation. So ideally, because you have an undefined sacral center, again, remember, that's that square. If it's colored in red, you're not a projector, you're a generator. But because we have it undefined, we're here to be very wise about the usage of energy, okay? We can maximize energy. We can maximize potential. How do we do that? We work with the right people who give us their energy resources to guide. And that cannot come from you initiating, hey, I see you're doing that wrong. Let me help you make it better. Mm -mm. No, because you think where you perceive wrongness, they might have responded to do that with their energy because it lights them up and they feel satisfied inside. So even though to us who are frugal with our energy, we're miserly, we figure out the shortest point between two distances, right? We don't go around like this. We try to go poop. So we make sure that we use our energy correctly. <laughs> my my, my sounds, sound effects today are making me laugh. Um, we're here to help people maximize resources and energy if they're inviting. So it's really, really, really important that you recognize 
where you really belong. And that does not happen from your mind. You can't strategize. Oh, I should go over here and so and so and this and that. They have to come to you first. Now, recognition is a two-way street. Yeah? It depends. Your success depends on a mutual recognition. Because you are gifted at seeing the potential of others, you can see how the patterns work. You can feel or recognize where things need to go. Kind of like those people when the light's out at the traffic sign or traffic symbol, you know, when the lights are out and there you got somebody there waving their flag, you know, okay, I can see you, you need to go this way, okay, you, now it's your turn. Kind of like that, where you're gifted in seeing the potential of where people fit in, where they belong, where they can go. And it's all about their own satisfaction, success, peace or delight in life, surprise. It's about them, it's not about what you think, it's about your recognition of them. So it works in a two-way street. When somebody comes up to you and is lit up in a recognition of you, you similarly recognize and light up as well. And that light shines in a different way depending on which authority yours is. So in the invitation, you need to wait for the recognition first and then other people who actually come and say, hey, you, I want you for you. Now, this is not about, hey, you, I want you because you work harder than everybody else and you work for less and you work, 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 and you really are a hard worker. Stop that. <laughs> it's not about being a hard, consistent worker. Oh, but you can get stuff done maybe quicker than other people because you can see how quickly you can get from point A to point B and skip all these other things along the way or maybe direct others or resource or outsource or um, evaluate how things, who can do what and what's the best way for it to happen. It's not about you actually doing the doing. You need to be somebody who learns how to delegate. Okay, and this is a big power trip that I see a lot of projectors have where they can't let go, they can't ask for help, they can't delegate because they have the false and mistaken belief system. If it's to be, it's up to me. That is the generator. That is the 3420, the pure manifesting generator channel that just boom, busy, 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 always doing, always doing, always doing, always doing. And that is the conditioning field that is happening all around us the background frequency of what all of us as projectors are getting sucked into. So are you exhausted? Are you burnt out? Do you have chronic fatigue syndrome? Are you dragging yourself along trying to get stuff done and just all you want to do is lay on the couch and rest? It's a sign. Your body is telling you, rest. Don't push. You're not here to push. You need to be aligned with the other who invites you to guide them. You are naturally designed to be seen by others. But guess what? If you're off there super slaving away and busting your ass and making yourself exhausted, you're being seen for the wrong job. It's not your job description to be the one that busts ass. <laughs> um, you're here to be seen by others. So looking at the projector again, back to the aura, which is focused, the interaction again is designed to be one person at a time. Because in that one person at a time interaction, this is where everything inside of you is singularly focused. No matter what your definition here, as long as you're a projector, your energy is singularly focused. So now think about the singular focus of a projector. Maybe you're sitting next to somebody. Can you think of somebody who, when you're around them, you're always feeling drained? They're bitching about their life. They want you to fix it. You give them your advice, but then they go off and do their own thing and you feel bitter and unrecognized and unseen and drained. Okay, so you're actually interacting with someone where you're not getting that beneficial mutual exchange. And invitation and recognition requires that you get something back for your focus. That is a priceless gift to singularly focus on the other and ask the right questions that get them to the heart of the matter, to the heart of the truth of themselves for them. That's your gift. So now if you're projecting into somebody, maybe you're codependent with your husband, I hope not, but for you, you know, whatever, whoever it is, your sister, your brother, anybody that's in your life, and you can't get them out of your life. They're codependent and you're sucked into their trip. That's damaging to you. 
it's like eating gasoline and you're not designed to eat gasoline. It fuels this fire inside of you that burns you up because you're not in alignment. If you feel bitter, signpost, big red flashing stop light says stop. Don't do that. Do not initiate with that person, okay? I don't care who they are in your life. Draw back. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I'm inviting you to wait. Wait for someone else to come to you. In my very first reading that I got, my um, analyst, who was a 5 1 ego and splenic projector, split definition, she said she, even though she had a defined throat, she stopped initiating with all of her family. Okay, remember I said earlier in the conversation if you've got an undefined throat, don't initiate, even though she had a defined throat like me. Stop initiating new interactions with people. Wait for them to come to you, okay? If you're emotional, you need to wait further once they invite you and wait for clarity as far as whether or not this person is right for you. Discernment is everything. So let's imagine you're walking down the side of the street, the side of the road, and you come across this giant hamburger or meatball sandwich, whatever, and it's rotting and it's got maggots in it and it's seriously gross. Would you pick that up and eat it? Mm -mm, of course not, right? But people come to you with their maggoty sandwich. Oh, this is so terrible. I apologize. But the visual sometimes helps it stick. They're giving you their energy to work with. And for you, because you're feeling bitter with them, it's like eating a maggoty sandwich. It's not for you. It's not healthy. You've got to use your own authority to discern. And there's an additional key besides the authority that really, really helps projectors. And that's one of the things I'm going to disclose to you in this program. Don't have time to do it for everybody today. Remember, your key, your operative word here is one person at a time. One person at a time to guide and advise. Now, for some of us, we have an ability to lead small or large groups for very short periods of time. And that's, again, only through recognition and invitation. That's an absolute must. For the vast majority of projectors, they don't have these strengths, they don't have these channels, so they have no business being in groups. But what is a group? A family, people you work with. If you're at a, an office where you go in and out of people's auras all the time, these strengths, are about the group and it, it negates anything outside of the group. So you lose your identity if you don't have a strength there. Okay, so really pay attention. One person at a time. Your mantra is one person at a time. <laughs> now, the projector, signature goal of success. The thing that I really want for you that my desire is for you to be your own authority so that you don't give away your authority to your uncle, your mother, your brother, your wife, your husband, your dog, your children, the government. I want you to be able to make your own decisions correctly for you. That is the only thing that's going to lead you to successful relationships, love, lifestyle, income, and living your purpose. This is all about you making the decision for you. So now we need to talk about who are you because now we're right back to that thing of you're trying to figure out who you are if you're deeply conditioned. Who the hell am I? Especially if you've got this center undefined, not colored in, white, that G center, which is your identity, that means you have a special gift. You really are able to penetrate into the other and take on their identity and know who they are. But yourself, for ourselves, really challenging. So who the heck are we? We are here for others, not everybody. You are only here for the specific people that need your guidance, that are empowered by your presence, that love your voice, that love interacting with you, that you have great conversations with, where you're talking with them and you lit up inside and you feel successful and you feel vibrant and you feel alive. Their life force is what you're working with when you're projecting into them one person at a time. So in order to do that, you have to know your strengths, talents, and gifts. And this is where the authority comes from, depending on where it is in the design, the configuration of you. Of you. This is this person's authority. 
So in order for you to access and be your own authority, the only way as a projector these strengths or these channels light up is if you wait for other people to source from you, to ask you, to invite you. Yeah, so watching for the signposts. Do you feel sweet? Do you have success in this life? That's a sign you're on track. If it feels lit up inside, you wake up at the beginning of the day and you're alight and alive and you have joy and you have laughter. Now, it's always, not always going to be like that. Life still gets in the way. You still spill your coffee, especially if you're a three and it's a third line day. I always spill my coffee on third line days. But you still have the availability of energy. If you're somebody who perhaps rolls around on their emotional wave, you still have the availability for that bitterness to be like a flash in the pan because it really doesn't necessarily matter. Spilling my coffee, oh well, got to go make it again. It's not a big deal. But it becomes a big deal if you're always sunk or stuck in this vibrational frequency of bitterness. If you're walking around bitter and amplifying frustration and anger, that coffee spills and boom, it's ruined your whole day. So it's a very different thing to be on track, to be on path and on purpose. It feels different. So hopefully I've given you a good overview of what we are. Now it's time to jump into the meat and potatoes, okay? Success secrets. So one of the most important things for you to do, my dear fellow projector, I invite you to study. You are here for systems mastery. You need to study and you need to master. What do you study? What do you master? What have you been invited into? What tickles your amygdala, your energy? What tickles your availability of curiosity and fascination? What could you do, look at, focus on, focus, remember we're focusing, focus on without a drain in your energy? What is that thing that lights you up inside? What is that thing that you're fascinated by? Think about people who have um, uh, Asperger's, which is high-functioning autism. They have a fascination with something specific. What's your fascination? What's the thing that you could do, and it doesn't matter about the money. Please stop doing things for the money. Money is not the thing. Money is not the trip. Yes, it buys a certain amount of comfort in our life and security, but Doing something for the money and not for what you're passionate about is definitely a dead-end street. It takes you down the path of bitterness. So what is it that you are feeling called to do? What lights you up? What makes your heart sing? What would you do even if you didn't make any money at it? Okay, what is that thing that you're studying? Do that. Okay, one of the biggest things that you can do because you are a projector who has systems mastery as their destiny is you can make connections. You can see things from that global perspective, from the big picture view. You can make the connections, you, in context with the other, again, ideally one person at a time. Really gives you the ability to see how the puzzle piece fits together, to create something more than just those two individual parts, yeah? <laughs> it's all about discernment. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So it's all about discernment. The discernment of you with the other is your key. Nothing else matters. You, <laughs> if you've been with me, uh, listening to my horrible example, but if you've been with me and you remember me saying, hey, don't pick up the meatball sub that's got all those worms in it because it's not healthy for you. Sometimes projectors who are so in their own trip trying to figure out who's right for them, they will chase that meatball sub with its worms as it runs screaming down the street to get away from him, from them. I've been there, done that. Ooh, please don't run after any of the rotten meatball subs in your life. Okay, so the most important thing, if you can remember nothing else besides gross <laughs> meatball subs with worms in them, is discernment. And discernment is never about chasing after something. Discernment is about waiting who wants you for your energy, who wants you for you, yeah? So the next piece is delegation. You can't do it alone, so don't even try. Almost all of our um, designs are designed to work in partnership, and then a few of us can also have a role in a team environment, okay? 
but ideally you're in partnership. So in partnership, you learn how to delegate. You don't do the doing. Somebody comes to you with their problem. You don't say, oh, let me solve it. Let me fix that for you. I'll go off and do that. Let me make those calls. Uh -uh. Not for you. Delegate. Okay? Work together. Work in teams if that's right for you. Work in partnership if that's right for you. Now, how do you find your partner? People go, well, what does waiting mean even? If I sit on the couch and wait, nobody's going to see me. I'm not telling you to do nothing. I'm asking you to study because once, ooh, <laughs> once you have that systems mastery, you're going to be able to help others. Ideally, remember, one person at a time. When we have a systems mastery, and for a lot of us, it's about working with the other to help them get to their success in the limelight, to help them get to their success in business or career or relationship whatever it is that they're coming to you for. What are people coming to you for right now? Like, what are they asking you? Do you notice any patterns? I know you can see patterns. So what are they commonly asking you for? What do you hear come out of your mouth? Those are some of your keys because you're already living your design, my friends. There's already some consistency in how people come to you and what you provide for them as an awareness or as guidance. Okay, so that's the second most important thing. Delegate. Don't try to do it all for you. You're not trying to do everything all by yourself. You work in partnership. You work in teams. So now that begs the question, how the heck do we work with people? Most of the people that you're going to come across in this world, 66% approximately, I just checked on Jovian as far as our statistics are concerned, are going to be the kind of person that needs a very direct yes or no question. So there's two ways you can ask a question. One is open. What inspired you to start your own business? That's an open question because you can't answer it with a yes or no. Can you imagine? What inspired you to start your own business? Yeah. <laughs> I can see my daughter doing something silly like that. She's a generator. So in order to learn how to work with her, I had to learn how to ask closed questions. Did you start your own business? Uh-huh. Was it right for you to start your own business? Uh-huh. You know, there's this sound. And oh my gosh, we've got to talk a bit about the sounds. So the sound of a generator, that sacral center down at the base of the body graph, yeah, the second square up, if it's colored in red, they have a mechanical resonance with the center that that sacral center is connected up to. And that resonance makes a sound when it's pinged. So if you ask the right question, you're going to get a vibrational frequency back at you in the form of a sound. It's not necessarily articulate. In fact, for most people, it's a grunting or a, it's, it's some kind of non-verbal, pre-verbal sound that really gets them to the heart of their truth. These guys are so lucky. They have the quickest path to awakening if they're not emotional. We'll just stop right there with the emotional people, something different. With the pure sacral generators, if you get to the heart of the matter with them, boom. They're living awake if they can just follow their authority, which is their sacral, which is their sounds, which is their movement towards or their movement away. So the way that you interact with these people is you ask them singular, focused, yes or no answerable questions. So my homework assignment for you, whether you decide to continue in this journey with me or anyone else or not, practice. Especially for those of you who have kids, the way that you respect your child's energy and you raise healthy adults is you give them their own authority. Of course, textually, with how old they are, if they're very young, you want to make sure you keep them safe first. But... In order to help them know who they are, they have to be sourced into their authority, and they can only do that if you ask a yes, no question. Please stop asking multiple choice questions to anybody who has a defined sacral center, that red square. And I can tell you, it's not as easy as it sounds, because the way that we projectors talk, we talk in big picture view and we see all of these things, we got to step it down, and most of those generators need a focused pattern or a step-by-step -step process to access their truth. You cannot overload them with too much at once. That doesn't lead to clarity of communication. It doesn't respect their energy. So do not ask them a yes, no question based on what you want. 
especially parents, hey? Do not ask them a yes, no question based on what you think they should do. Really tap into what is their energy telling you and help to get that generator motor kick-started by asking them the question that lights them up inside. And guess what? If you ask a question, they, they answer with, uh-uh, great news. Because now that know, you've eliminated one of the options. And so now you can hone your question in on something else. First things first, we got to get you on track. We got to get you aligned and alight, enlightened and alive. And that's what this class is for. So the other thing that we're going to do is look at all of the different types and how would you interact with all of the different types. So now I'm going to recap some of the things that I've uh, conveyed to you as far as our success secrets. And that is number one, master a system. Whatever system floats your boat. And then number two, wait to be recognized for your gifts, your skills, your talents, your way of seeing things. Okay. It's always about what is other people, what are other people asking of you? Think of the term projector, a projector, like the machine projectors that, that beam that stream of light onto the wall, that white wall, and it's projecting out something. All of us as projectors project our energy out and it's designed to be seen. It'll be seen by the right person who is attracted to you for you. Okay, the right person. So you got to trust that. You got to stop initiating because if you initiate, now you're busy with somebody who didn't necessarily ask you and they take your advice with a grain of salt. Maybe you're casting your pearls before swine is one of the ways that we say it here. You have to be discerning and your mind can't do that initially. You have to wait for them to come to you first. So especially if you've got something like this emotional play, no, not play. Be hard to get, okay? Not that I'm saying we're better than anybody, but remember the king or queen, the ruler, when somebody is coming as a supplicant to ask for advice or guidance or they need something, you hold the power in the interaction. You have more respect. You need to demand the respect that you so richly deserve. Stop chasing after romantic partnerships, businesses, yada, yada, anything. Stop. Do your best to master the system and watch as your life transforms before your eyes over time because you need to be able to let go of the mind's conditioned thinking that thinks it thinks it has to be do more than what you're already here for, that you're probably already doing with your closest friends. Now, think of your closest friend. I asked you to think about that codependent, ugh, sucky relationship where you're so sour. You're like, oh my God, I'm resentful. I'm bitter. I hate being around that person. My energy sinks every time I'm with them. Now flip it. Who is the person in your life that you feel totally light, lit up inside with? I hope you have at least one person. For most of us, one person, one person at a time. We don't need a huge parcel of fans and people. We just need that one person at a, at a time to guide to success. So how do we do that? We guide them to their authority, okay? Not a power trip, not telling them what to do. It's helping empower them, for some of us, support them, for some of us, share with them what it can be like if they just do what they love to do, if they be who they are for themselves in the generator's uh, example, because that's what their whole trip is. We are here for the other. The other is the most important thing in our life. So get your head out of your you know, and focus on other instead of you, not from a place of initiating. I got to make it successful for you because then I get at my success. That's not where it's at. It's waiting for the timing and the flow and the energy and the ease and the grace. And some of us will have a little bit of a struggle at it. But for the most part, that struggle or that fight will feel good inside. It'll light you up. You know, you have the energy for it energy, depending on what kind of projector you are. Now, one of the things that you really need to get good at, <laughs> I'm still working on this, <laughs> is learn how to ask questions in right timing. Ask them succinctly. Don't pile on too much stuff to consider. One thing at a time. In the right question, at the right time, the answer presents itself naturally. There's an ease and a flow. You don't have to overthink it. For them who are generative, it's a response. So learning what works, what doesn't, it's going to take some practice, okay? And I have some PDFs for you to practice with when you get to that space in our program, which is about the generator, the pure 
generator, okay? Not the emotional one. Now, the last piece I want to give you as an advice or guidance as one projector to another. One of the things that really, really helps is you need to take care of yourself like a pro athlete would. So what does a pro athlete do? Okay, the ones that really want to succeed, the ones that are successful, they take really, really, really good care of their body. So what happens if you have an undefined splenic center over here and you negate, you know, or you, you ignore what your signals your body is telling you? Oh my God, do you get sick. <laughs> and if you're defined here and you negate or ignore the signals your body is telling you, oh my God, you get sick and you stay sick longer. So you really need to pay attention to your body's signals or cues. When is it exhausted or overwhelmed or fatigued or burnt out? You believe there's something wrong with you when that happens, and it's not. It's just that you're not consistent with your energy production. It goes up and down. Hi, I'm emotional. Or it's there or it's not. It really depends on your individual design. So you need to listen, pay attention to your body's signals. Exhaustion is a signpost to go lay down. But you force yourself, no, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. It's, it's, it's up to me. I have to get this. Nobody else can do this right. No, I can't ask anybody for help. Oh, please. Remember, you need help. No man is an island. It's okay. It's not weak to ask for support, to ask for help. I would not have the success that I have if I didn't work with other people to ask for support and help when I needed it. So take care of yourself like a pro athlete. Listen to your body. Rest when needed. Learn how to take power naps or super naps or whatever it is that works for you. Now, last piece for now. Here in that undefined G center, if you have it undefined, so it's not colored in yellow, please be very, very careful with any kind of substances, alcohol, marijuana, drugs, prescription pharmaceuticals, any kind of chemicals. You have a inconsistently operating liver system that doesn't handle the toxins from the environment in the same way that someone like me can. So you're really sensitive to alcohol or any substances that damage your liver. And what can that do? It dulls your feeling or your sensation about a place. If you're undefined here, everything for you is about the place that you're in. If you're in the wrong place, you're with the wrong people. And if you dull your senses with alcohol, you do not have the same kind of level of sensitivity to what you are doing or who you are being in a place. So that's another health tip. I really want you guys to know. To, to take care of yourself, consider what would a pro athlete do? Because you have a finely tuned vehicle, you have a sensitive vehicle. A lot of projectors have a lot of openness. So you get easily fatigued, people fatigued or burnt out by a lot, too many experiences, too many auras at once. Yeah, a lot of us need very, very primarily um, ways of taking care of ourselves. So self-care is the operative term. Now, in my example on this next slide, this guy, he's a projector, but he is an um, energy projector. So you see Jackie Chan doing all these amazing things. Oh my God, wow. But he's one of those energy projector that has the availability to do things, you know, to, to get these experiences of his physical form out into the world. Yeah, but he's, he's going to take care of his body. He doesn't film a movie by himself. He doesn't wear all the hats and play all the roles. It's always about the partnership with the other. So remember that. In order for us to achieve our purpose in this life, there's a primary thing we call type. Okay, so the type, generator type, are the ones who build our world. The reflector type are the ones who can evaluate what's going on in our world. The manifestor type, I know you can't see my pen because I'm writing red over red. The manifestor type is the one who is about informing in order to impact, they innovate, they get the ball rolling. And then here's where we are, the projectors. We are here to guide and advise the other. So we need to celebrate our differences. We gotta stop trying to play other people's roles and start being ourselves. Now out of that many chart calculations, 30,268,479 as of an hour ago. 
There are 66% generators, 1.42 reflectors, 9.78 manifestors, and high, that's us, 22.7% projectors. Now let's take a look at this. These manifestors are about 10%. Add that to the 66% of generators, and you got most of the population who have access to energy to generate or energy to manifest. Those are our energy types. Do not initiate with the energy types. Wait for them to come to you so that you at least have that barrier, you know, that discernment. The first step in discernment is the mechanical, practical strategy of letting go of your mind, needing to talk or initiate or, you know, connect people now. Wait for them to come to you. Do not do anything without being invited and a clear recognition that is correct for you. That's the first step. That's our differences. We're not here to go out and make things happen. We're not here to slave away and work, 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 work hard. Now, one of the things that happens here with our generator friends is they tend to get sucked into other people's trip instead of who am I for myself. That's beautiful spiral of energy that they create. So they negate what they're here for by not paying attention to their response to life and they force their self to initiate themselves to initiate and then they're lost because they're walking down a path that they think they should go on instead of following the path of passion that they're actually here for so that's something that we need to be aware of in context with how do we guide them poor manifestors oh and i don't mean to sound condescending but i'm really glad i'm not a manifester these are people who need to impact they have a lot of power they can be horribly caged as children because they're so powerful and people try to put the clamp on them and then they grow up without access to their power so our manifestor friends need to be empowered they need to be able to initiate they need to be able to learn how to inform in order to make their impact because if they don't they're the most angry people in the world yeah these generators are the most frustrated these are the most angry so what happens if you're a projector and you are walking around frustrated and angry you're either trying to manifest or you're trying to generate or you're amplifying somebody who's generating off track or manifesting off track so we as projectors tend to get deeply conditioned by the other persons in our lives so that's one of the signposts that can help you know if you're off on track or off track. Learn your signposts, what the signature of these people in their life shining as the spirit of themselves show up like. Because if you're shining with that essence, that vibrational harmony or that sweetness of success, it's a very different feeling than running around angry or bitter or frustrated or disappointed. And it's entirely possible that you've gone through your whole life with this deep feeling of bitterness, so much so that you don't even know that you're in this constant sensation of bitterness. You're just, you know, constantly sour. You know, you've got this, like you're eating some raw lemon. Mm. You know, you just don't like life. You might complain about life. You're bitterly always going, poor me, why me, why now? Third line. If you've got a three in your profile, that might, might, might happen where you're always playing the victim, where you never have your success, even though you know it's somewhere, there somewhere for you. So I want you to be able to learn, how are you different? You are different in that you're the only person in this cadre of human beings that is about success, that you're born for. 